God be blessed and all of his people. And everybody said, amen. God bless all of you. Always happy to see you. And this is a special lesson for me today. Number one, because it's the last lesson of 2022. I want to give you a little tip here. If you got anything you want to do in 2022, hello, you better get with it. You better step on it. You only have a week left. Amen. And whenever you see the lesson about the Christ child, you know the year is coming fast to an end. And we got something to be thankful for. The Lord has brought us to the threshold, threshold of a brand new year, as well as the celebration of his birthday. Do we have something to praise God for? Amen. Yes, we do. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Thank all of you for your uh, diligence uh, on a consistent basis all year long supporting uh, the combined classes. Amen. And I love you dearly. Love Pastor Turner and all of you as well. And may God bless you. Keep me in prayer as well as the church. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. And we'll come back for a very, very powerful lesson on today. From the rising of the sun and to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is worthy to be praised. Lord, we praise you for allowing us to see another Christmas day, Lord. And even with all of the gifts and the giving and the commercialism, Lord, help us to keep you in the forefront of our lives because you are the reason for the season. And we thank you for bringing us to the threshold of a brand new year, Lord, and we help us that we won't take our old baggage into the new year, but Lord, we'll take your word and your blessing, your help, your support, and look forward to going over into a brand new year. Amen. Some of the old saying, mistakes that we made in 2022, Help us not to make those same mistakes in 2023. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if we take a look at our lesson today, we're talking about the birth of the Savior. And normally, uh, we don't look at our uh, author, uh, but occasionally we do. And today I want to because Luke is the author of the Gospel of Luke as well as the author of the book of Acts. Now, uh, Acts is a sequel to the book of Luke, meaning it's a continuation. These are historical books. They, they give the history of the church and, and things that happened and transpired, and without them, there would be a lot of gaps in our uh, reading of the Gospels and and other parts of the Bible, but because we do have the historical facts, it brings a very, very vivid picture and helps us out a lot in our learning. So be mindful, Luke, only Gentile author in the entire Bible, amen. So please remember that. And we start off our lesson and you see him talking about the Roman governments and the kings and stuff. He's making his appeal to the Gentiles so that they will embrace the gospel. Amen. So that's why you're going to see uh, Caesar Augusta, amen, as well as Quirinius. Uh, we'll mention all of those names. It's because we have a Gentile author, and he's trying to get the Romans uh, who are Gentiles to embrace the Christ child, amen. So please understand that as we move forward. So now, uh, having said that, Luke chapter two, verses one uh, through 17, the birth of the Savior. And note, the Savior was not born in a palace. He was not born under what we call uh, kosher conditions, amen. And if we look at it, as we look at it, be mindful. 
God put him through this. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And he had us in mind when he did it. Be mindful. Now, here we are, and it came to pass. And we see that now because we're talking about the birth of Christ. He wants our attention. Amen. It came to pass in those days, near east, eastern, near east uh, region here, that a decree, meaning an edict, went out by Caesar Augustus. Now, Augusta, that word actually means exalted. Amen. Amen. Exalted. Augusta Caesar. Amen. And he was an heir to Julius Caesar. And some of us studied him in our history uh, when we was going to school. Amen. Julius Caesar. Amen. So he was an heir to him. And now uh, he's taken the throne. He's got the title as exalted one. Amen. Because he was supposed to have been the Savior. He was supposed to have been the one who was claiming good news and peace to the nation. But guess what? He was not the real Savior. Jesus Christ, the birth that we're talking about. He was the real Savior, not Caesar Augusta. Even though his name meant exalted one, Christ was the exalted one. Amen. So now, Caesar Augusta, uh, that all the world should be taxed. Now, the purpose of this, and they call it a census, or uh, they call it a registration. Amen. Whichever one you want to call it, it's okay. It meant the same thing. They wanted to monitor the number of people in order to charge them taxes. Hello. Amen. And the Jews didn't like it at all because they knew that the census was for uh, the purpose of taxation as well as military uh, service. Amen. But the Israelites were not what? They were not to participate in the Roman military at all. So they didn't have to worry about that. But the taxation part, they had to pay their taxes. And that's why they didn't like it. Amen. Amen. Now, so having said that, it moves on uh, to verse 2. And he, he, he's embracing the Roman audience, getting their attention. By, by mentioning Caesar, that, that would immediately get the Romans' attention. And if they wanted to, to go back and exegete this and find out if Luke was actually telling the truth just by him mentioning Caesar and that time and uh, Cyrenius here in verse 2. They could go back and, and do a little study check and find out if Luke was actually telling the truth or uh, proclaiming the truth. Amen. So bear that in mind for the next couple verses. So he goes on and this taxation was first uh, that means more than likely this was uh, the first uh, census that was taken and that there was more than one censor taken by uh, uh, Cyrenius. And you'll see in other uh, excerpts of scripture, he was also called Quirinius, amen. But you're talking about same individual, amen. And they have a little friction with this verse here because he served at a time when uh, it did not line up during the birth of Jesus. But if you exegete that and find out, uh, he served two terms. Amen. And that's uh, how they cleared it up. And that word uh, first, the meaning that this was probably before the first censor that he had, which was probably, uh, they had this, meaning the second censor would have lined up with Jesus' birth uh, rather than the first, or at least that's what it makes it sound like. But anyway, so you don't get it confused here, uh, it was during 
one of his two terms that he served. He was the governor, the administrator of the censors, the registrations, the collection of taxes that were about to take place, amen, or take place for a second time, amen. And then, uh, verse 3, and all went to be taxed, everyone to his own city. Now, their own city carries the idea of going back to your ancestral home. That means the origin of the tribe you were in. And we know about the tribe, Benjamin, Glad, and uh, so all of the 12 tribes of Israel. And each one of them had a, a plot of land and that would have been considered their homeland. So they had to go back to their region and do their registration for the census there. Okay, and were taxed everyone to his own city uh, on how far that they had to go. Let's take a look at that real quick. Verse four, and Joseph also went, and it says up. Now, they were headed towards or close to Jerusalem. And Jerusalem elevation was what? Several hundred feet, maybe even thousands of feet above sea level. So no matter where you went, from what direction, you always went what? Up, because the elevation. And when the elevation goes up, what happens to the air? The air gets thinner, amen. And the journey is what? A lot of harder, because you don't have as much what? Oxygen in the air. And now here, Mary, who's with child, it makes it even more what? Difficult for her because she's almost to have the Christ child. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth. And look, what's the terminology or the climate for Nazareth? What do they say about Nazareth? No good thing can come out of Nazareth. Amen. So Nazareth didn't have a good track record. Amen. Politically, uh, they weren't political correct uh, in their actions and behavior. They weren't politically correct. And it was a pretty corrupt place. Amen. But God moved them there to bring them to the town of Bethlehem because that's what was prophesied in the scripture. Amen. And so here they are. Uh, 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 Nazareth, oh, Judea, into unto the city of David. Now we know the city of David is none other than what Bethlehem. Now, idea of it is meaning what we know, house of bread. And we don't know why it's called a house of bread, but we do know one thing: the Bible says what? No uncertain tongue. Man does not live by what bread alone. But what? Each and every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, that means for our nourishment, we not only need physical food, which is bread, amen, but we also need spiritual food. Some come from God's word, amen, and then we have physical consumption. And Jesus said the great I am, he declared, I am the bread of life. Amen. Amen. So that could have something to do with uh, Bethlehem being called the house of bread. And no, not only that he had to go back there to register, but guess what? David was born there. That's why they call it, or one of the reasons they call it, the city of David. Amen, because David, the shepherd, and we know him as King David, was born there. And, then, and not only that, uh, it's called Bethlehem because he was what? In the house and the line of David. He was a descendant of David. And it moves forward, and verse 5, it says, to be taxed with Mary, his ex-spouse wife. Now, we know when the angel spoke to Joseph and said, fear not to take this woman for thy wife, 
for that which is in her womb is of the Holy Ghost. Now, Joseph wanted to put away privately, but the Lord came or had one of the angels come and speak to Joseph, and he took her immediately into his home, even though the marriage was not uh, consummated with any type of physical involvement, they were still considered in their betrothal stage, and he did not touch her uh, physically until after she had had the Christ child. So please understand that. Amen. Oh, amen. So now, here we are here in verse 5, and now she goes on this trip. They knew that she was going to have a baby while they were gone. So now why did she go? I'm glad you asked. There's a lot of reasons, but at least three, three maybe four we'll, we'll cover. The first reason, first reason we want to look at is uh, they knew the baby was going to come while they were away, and more than likely, they did not want to be separated during this event. Amen. Why? Another reason, she knew, Mary, that the baby was the Messiah. And Joseph knew the baby was the Messiah. And they knew that he was supposed to have been born in Bethlehem. Amen? So those are three legitimate reasons. And then another reason, uh, she was found with child during the betrothal period, which was not supposed to happen. There was a lot of what going around? Gossip, hello, and stress. And Joseph wanted to what? Move her out of that climate. So we probably looked at one, two, three, possibly four reasons. There are probably more or less, but we'll let it go at that right there. Amen. But please understand it. They knew it. Now, was this an easy journey? <laughs> Take 90 miles. How's that? And the trip was probably taking about three days. That means they had to cover 30 miles a day. And they weren't riding on no Boeing 747. <laughs> they didn't get no taxi. They didn't take the your ride. Forget that one. Hello. Amen. Amen. Both of them were loyal and dedicated to their calling. And God took care of them. Amen. Both of them. Please understand that. It wasn't easy for either one of them. And then even after that, God got a hold of them and said, here I is kind of try to kill him. Get out of here. And he had to take him and go down to Egypt to keep him from being what? He, uh, here I was trying to kill all the babies two years old and under. Hello. They didn't have an easy journey. So when you have some difficult, some hardships in your life, don't think that Jesus, our Lord and Savior, had it all that easy. Him or his parents. According to this, they didn't. Hello. Talk to me if you can. Amen. Now, 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 it moves on, and it tells us why she, she made the journey. So now, verse 6, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished. We know that uh, she had the baby there. And, and what scriptures support that, Michael? I know you know it. Michael chapter 5, verse 2. Amen. We know that. And uh, if you get a chance, post that. If not, uh, um, we've, we've heard it a number of times anyway. But it's Michael chapter 5, verse 2. That supports uh, that scripture. Looking at verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son. The insinuation is that she was going to have what? More sons. More sons. But Jesus was her what? Was her first, first son. We know that. And she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. Now, now, 
we have to part here momentarily because this, verse 7, is the greatest miracle in the history of the world. Greatest. Jesus already existed. We, live, we find him in Genesis. Let us make man in our own image and on our own likeness and give him charge over the animals, over the sea, and let him take charge. That was Jesus existing. God took something that already existed. God being equal with him reduced him to a fetus and overshadowed him with the Holy Ghost in Mary's womb. And she carried him for nine months. And he is what we call, or the calling is, a hypostatic union. Amen. Meaning he was what? Both man and God. Where? All at the same time. There was never a point where he was not God. Amen? And there was never a point when he was not human. Hydrostatic union bringing what? Divinity and humanity together into one. And putting her in Mary's womb for nine months. Nobody but nobody could explain that. And then he had to die. After that, when he was about 33 years old, and then God, what? Allowed his death, and then he did what? Resurrected him from the dead. Hello. That's mind-boggling, to say the very, very least. And nobody can explain it. But it is true. And that's what we celebrate. Jesus had to become a human in order to save the human race. The blood of goats and bulls, how long did that save mankind? It was a covering, but it was only what? Only temporary. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus came as the Lamb of God. And that's how he took away the sin of the world. Amen? Greatest miracle in all of history. You read it right here in verse 7, part 8. Greatest miracle in history. Known by anybody. Always remember that verse. As a Bible student, you should know it. Amen? That's our historical fact right there. Amen. And then it moves on with some other uh, things. We'll look at them. And she brought forth her first son, wrapped him in what? Swaddling clothes. Now, swaddling clothes were for people uh, that had some money. <laughs> swaddling clothes weren't cheap. Amen. They were strips of material. And they wrapped them here to protect their what? their body, give them a feeling of security after being in the womb for nine months. That tightness kept them secure as well as warm. It kept them warm. Now, they did not have the best condition. Hello? Do you know what the immortality rate for children back in those days were? <laughs> Hello? Let me tell you. If you take a study of the demographics, we would call that the vital statistics office. It was so high at certain points that if 10 babies were born, only one survived to live into adulthood. The immortality rate was close to 90%. Amen. And some less, some more, 
depending on whether we're in a famine or, or what was going on in the, in the climate uh, at that particular time. And not only that, they had what they call a redemption ceremony. That was for the firstborn male in each family, a redemption ceremony. They wouldn't even have that until the baby had lived at least 30 days. Because if he made it 30 days, it was a good chance that he might, what, make it into adulthood. Amen. It wasn't an easy road, especially for children. They didn't have uh, pampers, sanitized, purified water, and everything. <laughs> Hello. And we're going to look at that in the rest of this verse. Amen. Look what it says here. She bought for her first, wrapped him in his brother, laid him in a manger. You know what more than likely that manger was? We see him in the nativity scene. He made out of wood. More than likely, this manger was made out of rock. Hewn out of a rock, probably limestone. And they would dig out a crevice in there, and they would put the food for the cattle right in there. That's what they laid him in. And he needed those swaddling clothes to protect his outer skin, uh, keep his bones straight, especially the arms and what? The legs. Amen. Please understand that. Amen. Amen. And because there was no room for him in the inn. Now, what that means is uh, they lived in quarters back then. They weren't staying at the Hilton. They didn't have private rooms for everybody. What they were really saying was, wasn't anywhere set aside for a woman to have a baby. Hello. It wasn't. They didn't have, they didn't have a place for that. So they went and got a little bit of privacy, as much as they could get, get for her to have the baby. And it probably was in a stable or uh, in a cave, uh, anywhere they could get privacy. Amen. Amen. Uh, the hotels or inns, there was one great old big room. And everybody what? Stayed there. Amen. Or they relegated them to somebody's house or, or wherever there was a vacant spot. And so many people being there for the uh, for the censors, it was just overcrowded. Amen. Believe that. Now, now the swaddling clothes laid him in a manger, no room in the inn, quarters, cave, or stable. And then look at verse 8. Now, the birth of Christ is over. Now we're talking about the angels introducing the Christ child. Amen? The angels. So you know Jesus was significant. He was important for the angels in heaven to announce his birth. Amen? And Luke is trying to prove it to his Roman and Gentile friends, saying, look what kind of announcement he got. Okay, and that was in the same country, shepherds. Now, these were probably what they call sacrificial lambs, and there was a lot of money in that, and the people couldn't travel and bring with them, so when they got there to offer their sacrifices, they bought lambs uh, from the temple. Amen. Jesus came as the Lamb of God. And he sacrificed himself for what? All of us, amen, to take away our sins. And look at here. Jesus was a shepherd. Who else was a shepherd? David. <laughs> King David was a shepherd. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 23. Post that for me if you get a chance. Ezekiel. Chapter 34, verse 23. He was a shepherd. Jesus Christ came in this seven great I am. He says what? He didn't say he was the shepherd. He says, I am the good shepherd. Hello. 
Hello. Hello. And God chose the shepherds to announce the Christ child. But deep down, did the shepherds have a good reputation? <laughs> no. They didn't have a good reputation at all. They, them fellows, they, they interacted with Gentiles, and so they were considered to be unclean. Amen. And not only that, they could not even testify in a courtroom setting because they were so what? So untrustworthy. But in spite of all of that, God chose the shepherds, amen, to introduce the Christ child. And some of them what? Represented ordinary people, ordinary people. They represented ordinary people. Some of them what? Embraced the gospel and went on to be what? Great preachers and teachers and evangelists, amen. They did a magnificent job, amen. And don't forget King David was a shepherd, amen. He took care of the sheep. And God wants to see if you could take care of sheep before he lets you take care of his people, amen. Please understand that. So now, here we are here, uh, Christ, who became the Lamb of God, amen. And he was what? crucified, declared himself the good shepherd. So don't get sold off on shepherds. All of them not bad. Amen. Amen. Now, now, here we are. Look at verse 9 here. And lo, the angel. Now, who knows who the angel was? Normally when we see the definite article D, we say it's what? Pre-incarnate Christ. Reincarnate Christ. And, that, and that's usually the answer. But in this particular situation, they're talking about Gabriel. Gabriel, who was an archangel. Amen. And he was the one in chapter 1 that visited Elizabeth and Zechariah. Amen. So now, here Gabriel, he's laboring again. Now, he's laboring for the Christ child. Amen. So the angel comes. Uh, uh, and he comes to them. And look what else happened now. Look what else happened. It says, and the glory of the Lord. You know what that glory is? They call it that Shekinah glory. You know, that's an appearance or the presence of God. Amen. Amen. And they call that an epiphany. And we're going we're gonna to put epiphany up so you can take a look at that and understand. It's a brief but direct encounter with God, an appearance or manifestation, especially of divinity. Amen. That's verse 9 here. So understand this. That's light that they're talking about. And the glory, this, the glory was the light. And, and it was what, you, what they call the light of divine power. It was totally dark out there. And I mean, you never see darkness like they had no street lights, amen. And they were taking care of the sheep. Why did they have to take care of the sheep? For two reasons. One is thieves to keep thieves from stealing them, and two, the wolves and the bears and all the predators, you know, from eating up the sheep, amen. So they had a job, and the bears, amen. And we know David. He killed what? Lion and the bear for, for stealing the sheep. Amen. So uh, that was big business. But God just what? Come in with a light that they could not explain. In total darkness, the light just burst in. Burst in. Amen. Amen. Please understand that. And they were what? A part of that verse, and they were sore afraid. That sore afraid means that they feared a great fear. They were astonished. They were shocked. Amen. Because they couldn't account for this light that showed up. That was the glory of God. God's presence was there. So you know the Christ child was what? Extremely significant. Extremely uh, 
important. Okay, verse 10, and the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you what? Good tidings. I bring you good note. From that word, good tidings, we get the word gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. It's related some, in some way or form to the Messiah or the kingdom of God. That's where they get that. And it's going to be what? Bring great joy to who? Everybody. And the gospel was what? For everybody. Amen. Look what it says in the next verse. And unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. Now, they wanted a Savior. But they wanted the Savior for the wrong reason. They were under the oppression of the Roman government. They wanted a savior to save them and deliver them from the Roman Empire. That's, that's what they wanted. See, some people want a savior, and they want him for the wrong reason. Jesus came to save them from their sin. And that's why he came for you and I, to save us from our sin. And sometimes we want him for the we want him to deliver from all our, our our bad circumstances and situations. Oh yeah, that's natural. But he's more interested in giving you eternal life to live with him forever than he is from delivering you from every one of your mistakes and poor choices. Amen. Please understand that. Savior. Savior carried the idea of a deliverer and a redeemer. Look what they gave him, Savior, Christ. We know Christ is what? The anointed one, anointed of God. Lord, now Lord can be uh, his name, Jehovah. It can also mean uh, um, a standard name of God. Amen, Jehovah. And it can be also a secular ruler. Amen, a ruler. It can, they can call him Lord. Amen. And it can also mean master or what? Teacher. Amen. But Jesus is Lord, Savior, and the Christ. Please understand that. That's the reason why the angels were celebrating him. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find a babe wrapped in what? Swaddling clothes again. Amen. To protect Security, warmth, keep what? Limb straight and protected. Amen. Even the clothes that they wore were washed in sometimes polluted water. Amen. They didn't have purified water like we, like we have today. Amen. Amen. Please know that. Know that. And he wasn't born in a hospital and he wasn't born in the palace. Hello. Amen. Those were the conditions. And look, real quick at verse 13, and we're almost out of here. Uh, and suddenly, that means unexpectedly, unexpectedly, what happened? There was an angel. First, there was an angel down here in verse 9. One, we talked about Gabriel. Now, there's a whole multitude, 5,000. We know that's what a multitude is. 5,000 not counting the women and the children. Amen. We don't know. It's innumerable. These are the armies of heaven here now. And what are they doing? Singing and praising God. And if the angels do it, don't you know we ought to be doing it? Singing and praising God. That's what they were doing. And it says here, uh, uh, and suddenly there was an angel, multitude of heaven's host, praising God and saying, look what they said, glory to God who is in the highest. That means, that highest means heaven. Glory to God in heaven and on earth, good will to those whom God's favor rests upon. It's for everybody, but everybody's not going to receive it. It's for those that God's favor 
rest on, those that embrace him. Amen. And please know, in the Latin, Bogan, you know what those words translate into? It says, Gloria in excelsis Deo. And I know you sung that song before. Gloria in excelsis Deo. That's what it means, glory to God in the highest. That's in the Latin, amen, the Latin version. So, and then it's also in the Latin, what they call the Bogan, amen. Okay, real quick, uh, uh, peace on earth, goodwill to man, and look at 15, and it came to pass that the angel was gone, what? Away from them, where? Into heaven, amen. It distinctly tells you that they came from heaven. And then they what? They went back to heaven. Look at the connection between Jesus, the baby, and heaven. And it confirms that there's a link and a relationship between heaven and the Christ child baby. Amen. Please understand that. And he's trying to convince the people that Jesus did indeed come from heaven. He is the Messiah that the Bible talks about. Some people don't want to receive that. But this is a confirmation. The angels came from heaven and they what? Went back to heaven. But they came to announce the Christ child. Amen. So we got to hurry on here. And it came to pass the angels that were gone away from them into heaven. And the shepherds said one to another, let us go and see what the angels have told us about. Let's go see the truth. That's what they were saying. So he takes off here. Let us go now to Bethlehem to see this thing which has come to pass. Uh, the Lord have made known to us. And they use the word Lord here as what? One of the words we talked about, Lord meaning Jehovah God. That's what it means here. Okay. And they came with haste and found Mary and the baby. And the baby what? Lying. Just like the angel had told them. Amen. That was the confirmation of the scriptures to say, yes, this was true. Everything that the angelic beings told them, yes, it was true. Amen. Confirmation. And the last verse here. Uh, and when they had seen it, they made known abroad and saying which, uh, saying which was told them concerning the child. Look, even though the, the, the shepherds had a bad reputation, they were the first evangelists to go out and prominent, uh, proclaim the word of God. First evangelists. Everybody counted off the shepherds because they were so untrustworthy. But can I tell you something? Be careful about who you hate on. Be careful because some of those very people that you might be hating on, you never know when they'll repent of their sins. And you might be thinking about them in the past tense. But guess what? They might have got saved last night. And you ain't know nothing about it. And you still hating on them. And they inside of God's will right now. Hello. That's why you got to be careful who you're hating on. Amen. And when it's a shepherd, you never know. It just might be Jesus that you're hating on. Be careful. I love you. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Let us look to the Lord if we're out of here. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. If you got anything you want to get done in 2022, you better get on it right now. Amen. You got less than a week. Love you. Happy New Year. Heavenly Father, God bless you. We praise you for blessing us to see a new Christmas, another Christmas. Blessing us to be on the threshold of a brand new year. We praise you. We love you. We adore you. In Jesus' name, amen.